you want to watch that epic, award-winning film in a cinema, not on a little screen on the back of an aeroplane seat. You hope you'll find the right retort the instant the insult has been thrown, not 20 minutes later. You imagine love at first sight occurring across a crowded room at a black tie ball, rather than as you're taking the bins out on a Tuesday morning. Right time, right place. But life doesn't always work out like that. Then again, sometimes it does. This is a Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer on deserted roads on a golden day in the Golden State. You know when you hear a lot of hype is probably the wrong word, but a lot of praise for something, and you think, can it really be that good? The more you hear it, the more you start to think, well, it can't really be as special as all that, can it? Well, yes, it can. If you're after a revelation that this restoration and reimagining of a 964 is rubbish, then I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you. The first thing you notice when you drive this is actually how easy it is to drive, how friendly it is. It's not a difficult car to get to know. You might think old 911, carbon fibre bodywork, 3.8 litre, 4 litre in this case engine. Surely this could be a bit of a monster it feels really friendly and it's a car you can imagine living with every day that might sound odd but there's obviously a beautifully trimmed interior we've got air conditioning i love the fact that there are still seats in the back of here with seat belts unlike all porsche's own gt cars where you can't take anyone along for the ride in the back seats and then you start to drive it a bit harder and it just feels so smooth. The gear shift is wonderfully slick. The pedals are perfectly placed. The steering is just wonderfully weighted. And then for me, almost the standout is the Olin suspension underneath this. The dampers. I love a bit of roll in a car, a slightly plusher, more pliant setup. And this, and this has certainly got that. Yes, maybe you get a bit of nose bob on some of these really bumpier roads, or when you're going quickly, you lack a little bit of connection. It can feel a little bit floaty at really high speed stuff, but I would sacrifice that every day of the week for the fact that when you're driving on a road like this, you can really feel the weight, you can use it. And even when you're driving at only six tenths, it's a car that talks to you. You can enjoy the way the weight moves around, the way you use the weight, which is so important, obviously, in a 911. It breathes with the road in a supple way that reminds me of the first time I drove a Pagani Zonda. It flows, yet also feeds back. This Olin sports suspension setup is an optional extra. In fact, this is quite the ultimate build as it also has the optional 4-litre engine, putting out 390 brake horsepower and 315 pounds foot of torque, and the optional 6-speed G50 gearbox with limited slip diff. It weighs less than 1,200 kilos thanks to its carbon fibre bodywork and will hit 60 miles an hour in less than 3.5 seconds. But the reason that it costs upwards of half a million dollars is the attention to detail, the 993 steering, the nickel-plated bright work, the Becker stereo, the seats that look right but also grip perfectly. They all add up to make this car feel special, not just when it's rung out, but also when it's mooching or even parked up. In other words, all the time. In the same way that the interior of this car has been refined and it's like every detail has been thought of, so it's like all the any rough edges have been polished off the chassis and the way this moves down the road. <laughs> what a car! What can I criticise? 
Well, if anything, the engine is almost too smooth. It's, it's so linear the way that it produces its power and the way that it revs. Perhaps it could be a little more gnarly. That might take away some of the usability, I suppose, but it is so smooth. Perhaps I'd like just a little bit more snarl and bite to it. The only other criticism, I'm not a fan of the wing mirrors. I, 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 that's just that's just preference. I'm trying to find fault. I'm trying to be good here. I'm trying to say things I don't like. <laughs> I know. I really am in the realms of nitpicking. You can, of course, trim and tailor one of these pretty much however you'd like, and I'd defy anyone to drive one and not imagine how they would have theirs. I'd have my suspension set up with perhaps just a little less lateral tenacity at the rear, and I love the look of the recent sine qua non commission. On this road, it's all second and third gear. It's fantastic the way the cameras work with it. You just have a little lift, let that weight balance work for you. You can just feel it just sliding on the exit of the corners. You really lean into the lean into the power. You get that beautiful traction but the feeling of it just squaring the corner off on the exit. start to lean on the brakes into the corner get that nose in this has got the carbon ceramic brakes which are optional but I definitely think are nice to have it just gives you the confidence on a long road like this particularly when you enter the descent that you know you've got confidence in their abilities Along with, I suspect, many of you, one of my favourite games in moments of idleness is assembling a dream garage. Hours, even days, can be spent picking three, five or ten cars to fill a fictional collection. But the almost impossible version of that game is being forced to pick one. Just one. You need the car that combines it all. But in this Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer, I think I might have just found the answer. Because it's classic, but modern because it's beautiful but understated, because it's fast but fun. Because it's usable but special. One car to rule them all, this just might be it. This is a day that has definitely been worth waiting for. I just don't want it to end. 